And welcome everybody to Fitness Friday. We've got head coach Chad Blake right here with us. Okay, and I just wanted to bring a, a topic to you that's really, really poignant to this season. So we're going to be talking about sugar. So Chad, why are we talking about sugar right now? We're talking about sugar because we're just on the beginning of the holiday season and we know that people are going to be exposed to more sugary goodness over the next several weeks. Um, over the years, I've seen a lot of people who would even kind of shut down their their health goals because they were just exposed to so much stuff, especially if they work in an office environment. So that's just why we we're broaching the subject today. Okay. So sugar, big topic. We got Halloween coming up. We got Thanksgiving coming up. We got Christmas coming up. We got New Year's coming up. All these things. How do we avoid sugar? Why do we avoid sugar? All this kind of stuff. So let's start out. Um, a lot of people try to avoid sugar with artificial sweeteners. So tell me why that's not the best idea. <clears throat> artificial sweeteners are problematic because they, uh, they're, they're chemicals and we're still learning really how they affect the body. Uh, people argue about this a little bit, but um, you know they, they, they say that like a, a given substance isn't bad for us and you know, they'll do clinical trials and stuff, but one thing is some substances accumulate in the body over time. Uh, so it doesn't matter if like a certain dose isn't bad for us. You, you can say the same thing about arsenic. You know, arsenic in the small dose isn't bad for you, but if it builds up in your system, you die. So uh, not drawing that conclusion about artificial sweeteners, but I just think there's, they're, they're chemical based and it's just, we don't know enough about them to feel like they're safe for regular use. Now, if you have to have some once in a while, I wouldn't panic necessarily, but I just wouldn't make them a, a substitute. I also feel that like um, part, part of the thing when we're looking at this whole subject of health is how the body reacts to sweetness. Uh, when we eat things that are sweet or sugary, we get more of an insulin response. Uh, it is a fact that if you're producing insulin, you can gain weight without eating food. Um, most of you have heard about, uh, what's that, the diet that's real popular? Uh, intermittent, intermittent, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Yeah. The, the reason intermittent fasting is a thing is because a uh, kidney doctor from Ontario got very frustrated with the health of his patients uh, from giving them kind of standard advice. Um, and putting them on insulin because most of them, a lot of them were diabetic, type 2 diabetics, uh, knowing that when you put them on insulin, they were going to gain weight and their health was going to de decline. So that's how it, that's why intermittent fasting is a thing. Um, it's, uh, so uh, people like Johnny Bowden talk about how there's some concern with, um, uh, like, uh, even with like soft drinks, so say like they're zero calorie because they're artificial sweeteners. So people think they're safe to drink because it's artificial, there's no because there's no calories in it. But if you're getting an insulin response from it, you can still gain weight. So, so yeah, and with that, it makes you want to drink more because yes. your insulin responds, your blood something. sugar drops, and yeah. so your body goes, oh, I need another hit of that blood sugar, and so you take another drink of the Coke. Yeah, because basically when you, um, when you substitute nutrition for flavor, uh, what happens is when you consume anything, your cells are expecting nutrition. When they don't get nutrition, the body produces more insulin, trying to find uh, something to shuttle into those into those cells, and that's how people end up type two diabetics. So, yeah. th those are just some of the, some of the things about artificial sweeteners that, I, especially with like soft drinks, I don't feel like they're a good alternative. Yeah. So that's artificial sweeteners, but what about like alternative sweeteners, like honey and, and stevia and different things that we can use? So I think things like honey and stevia are much better. That doesn't mean you should eat it by the fuck of it. <laughs> so I can't eat a whole jar of honey at once? Probably not. Okay. No. But they have, there, there is research that shows that honey is good for your immune system. Um, one of the things about that is it's regional. So if you like move to a new area, uh, I think it can give you a good excuse to go to a farmer's market or something and find some local honey. and um, But just use it in moderation. Don't, like you said, don't eat a whole bucket. <laughs> you know, just use it like a teaspoon here and there. Because if you eat too much, it'll add to your waistline. Um, but there is quite a bit of research that shows benefits to honey. Uh, stevia, I think, is sort of neutral. Um, but it's still sweet. So just, you know, it's not a... 
it's not a free pass. Just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So um, last thing I kind of want to cover is instead of sugar on a lot of packaging, I see corn syrup. Yeah. So talk to me about corn syrup and, and what that is with corn in general. So, so many things about corn. Uh, the simple thing to keep in mind is ranchers feed corn to cattle because it makes them fat. <laughs> Okay. That's why I was called corn fed growing up. Yeah. Just FYI. And it and it works. I mean it does it it's the difference between uh grass fed beef and corn fed beef is dramatic. You can see it even in a in a grocery store. I mean it's just um it's startling. Um corn is a grain, it's not a vegetable. I can point that out to people as well. Yes, very, very important because I grew up thinking corn was a vegetable. Yeah, it's not. That, that was what my parents told me. So it's not a vegetable, okay? It's grain. Rob, I'm talking to you. Corn is not a vegetable, all right? So, anyway, sorry. So, no, it's fine. So along those lines, like, I don't, I, I like using corn as a garnish. Like, it sweetens things. So, like, I'll use corn in a meal um, because it has that purpose, and that's fine. I don't freak out if someone wants to use corn as a side dish once in a while, just understanding what it is. You know, if you're doing that, it should kind of torture your carbs. Because it's a starch, it is a starchy grain. Um, it's not a vegetable. But um, now, what we one thing is like, if you've ever been out on a farm or a farmer's market or whatever, or probably even your grocery store, looked at an actual like uh, corn of wait, what do you call it? A head. Oh, head yeah. of corn. Uh, ear of corn. Thanks. Ear. Thank you. An ear yeah, of corn. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> like no, no human would eat that the way it is. We have to alter it. It's that way. So cooking it's fine, um, and corn has some antioxidants, so that's good. But um, when you extract things from it to sweeten things, that's where we can end up with issues. Now, a lot of scientists will make the claim, and the people who defend corn will talk about how chemically uh, corn has the same, like high fructose corn syrup has the same structure as uh, as sugar does, but your body doesn't handle it quite the same way, um, and it still that doesn't mean that it's good for you. So I've seen. People try to put up the argument that like corn is natural because it's corn. It's not natural once we start to take extracting stuff. It's not we're we're done with natural at that point. Um, it's not processed food. It's, it's not natural yeah, food. And, it's, and the reason corn is in so many things is because it's been just an inexpensive option for manufacturers for a long time because because farmers have been subsidized by the government for a long time to grow corn. So it uh, it just made it an inexpensive source for. For decades. And talk, talk to me a little bit about the addictiveness of sugars and corn in well, that's your a, system. That's a great question. So one thing that, you know, we hear people once in a while, I've heard people try to justify like, oh, I like, I crave it. So my body must like need it. Like, it's, <laughs> I need something. It's I like, crave ice cream every yeah, night, that, right? <laughs> you're, you're describing an addiction, basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, just because we crave something doesn't mean that our body needs it to function at all. Um, it's, uh, we, we get in kind of a, a loop, um, there's a term for that, vicious cycle, uh, basically where when we, and this goes back to our software thing earlier, let's say that I have a popsicle or something that's sweet and powerful to sponsor up, that's actually going to stimulate hunger, it's not going to satisfy me. Um, now the sweetness might satisfy me like initially, but again, Consuming something that's probably digesting very fast. When things digest very fast, they're more likely to go to our fat cells and less likely to go to our muscles um, and our organs. So you have insulin receptors in all your cells, basically. And if you uh, consume things that are very sweet, <clears throat> it's more likely they're going to go into your fat cells. When that happens, your body realizes it's not getting nutrition. It's expecting nutrition because you just consumed something. Body produces more insulin. Uh, we end up in this vicious cycle. We get that endorphin hit too, right? Yeah, so it, like it might, um, now anytime we have carbohydrates, uh, even something that's good for us, we're going to produce serotonin. Um, so you might experience which makes us feel good, which is important. But um, so there, there is research that shows that actually having some carbohydrates at night uh, can help you sleep because you'll produce serotonin. But you don't want that to be like isolated sugar by itself because then you're just going to get a spike of energy and then you're going to crash and it's going to disturb your sleep. So okay. so I know that was a lot. Um, we actually linked his blog article below this, right? So if you want to know more about sugar, if you want to figure this out and really help yourself out through the holidays, he put his blog post right under this video. Go ahead and click on that, jump over, read some more, and then you can have the opportunity 
to uh, message him and talk to him in person. Chad, you got anything else? Also, I think we're going to link 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth. Yeah. Uh, that's a fantastic book that I have used for a very long time. It's written by a guy, a PhD named Johnny Bowden, that I've studied for a couple decades now. Um, I've had most of my clients have bought that book over the years, and it's just, it can change your life, quite honestly. It's not the kind of book you'll read from cover to cover, but it's a great reference thing. So. No, seriously, he, he introduced that to me. I've been doing this for 10 years. He introduced that book to me, rocked my world on some of the stuff yeah, I ate. Just, um, so it was, it was great. So we'll make sure we'll include that link. But thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. We'd love to chat with you. We'll talk to you later. Adios. Have a good weekend.